Good afternoon. The story that I'm going to tell you tonight actually starts many years ago. It started right after the Second World War in uh, London, and uh, it's about the London buses. And at that time, the London buses were equipped with two types of employees. W one employee was sitting in the front of the bus, driving the bus around in the busy London traffic the whole day, and the other employee was the conductor walking back and forth in the London bus and up and down in the bus. And the main differences of the these two types of employees was that the driver was sitting inactive the whole day while the conductor was walking the whole day. There was a professor at that time in London called Jeremy Morris, and Jeremy Morris suspected that the driver was more sick and uh, was, was dying uh, sooner compared to the active conductor. So he started counting up the number of uh, uh, diseases, uh, uh, the number of diseases and the number of deaths. And what he found uh, is shown here. He found that uh, the number of uh, heart disease in the inactive driver uh, was twice as high compared to the active conductors. But not only the uh, number of uh, heart disease, but also deaths from heart disease were uh, two to three times higher in the inactive drivers compared to the active conductors. So what uh, Jeremy Morris did uh, for, uh, as the first uh, scientist, he showed the connection between uh, uh, physical activity, makes you live longer, and uh, also that uh, inactive people tend to live shorter. So today, we know that physical activity is the major risk factor risk factor for lifestyle diseases around the globe. Physical inactivity kills 5 million persons globally each year, and that is as much as smoking. So these two risk factors are the most severe risk factors for, uh, for killing people. If we take a closer look on, uh, on physical activity, a lot of studies have been done uh, uh, showing the relationship between physical activity and the longevity. This study comes from Hawaii, and it's a very simple study, but it is pu published in uh, one of the best scientific journals uh, that exists. And it, it shows uh, quite uh, easy uh, this relationship. People were asked, uh, how many uh, uh, miles do you walk per day? And uh, people were classified in three different, gr different groups. Uh, here shown uh, people uh, reporting uh, that they're walking the longest distances. Here are the middle distances, and here are the short distances. And we see that the total mortality after 12 years uh, in the group that were uh, saying that they were walking uh, longer distances is very, very much uh, lower compared to the other two groups. <coughs> A good effect of uh, being physic physically active is that you improve your fitness level or your aerobic capacity. And aerobic capacity is best measured by, uh, by measuring the oxygen uptake. And the oxygen uptake uh, is best measured on a treadmill or on a bicycle. Put on a mask and see how much oxygen your body is able to consume during a progressive uh, incremental test. And at the end, uh, your body consumes a lot of oxygen, and you have to stop because you're exhausted. And the the uh, the, the number your uh, the amount of oxygen your body can consume uh, permitted is considered the, uh, the, the your maximal oxygen uptake. And what we know about uh, the oxygen uptake is that your fitness level or your measured oxygen uptake is very closely related to risk factor clustering. So uh, this is a study we have conducted in my group, and it shows uh, measured oxygen uptake, and the individuals that have been participating in the study, uh, they are classified in four fitness uh, levels, and then we are counting up how many people in each group po uh, possess these uh, risk factors. And we see that uh, if you are uh, classified being uh, uh, in the group of highest fitness, your chances of having these cardiovascular risk factors that we know are uh, uh, um, very determinant for uh, giving you uh, heart diseases later in life, they are much lower when your fitness level is highest. 
And uh, the group that uh, uh, were possessing uh, poorest fitness, they, they have uh, a, a chances of having these uh, cardiovascular risk factors uh, five times as high as those in the, in, the, in the highest fitness group. We also know that uh, uh, the measured fitness level is a very, very strong risk factor itself. The good thing, however, is that uh, your fitness level is a modifiable risk factor. This study uh, involving 10,000 persons uh, was conducted in, uh, in, in Dallas, in Texas, by Stephen Blair and his group. And uh, they tested the aerobic capacity of 10,000 men. And they put the men in two different groups. Either you were classified as unfit or fit. And five years after, they repeated the testing. And at this time, the participants were able to, 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 to stay at their fitness level. Uh, for instance, uh, stay in the unfit group or stay in the fit group. But the participants could, could also be reclassified in another fitness group. Say, going from f fit to unfit or from unfit uh, to, uh, to uh, be classified as fit. And what they then did was to follow these persons for another five years and counting up the mortality. So, as this uh, uh, last uh, uh, figure shows, that the individuals that were classified fit at both test occasion, occasions had uh, less risk of dying in the following up period. And those that died the most uh, were the people that were classified as unfit at both uh, test occasions. But the good thing is that those uh, individuals that choose to go from an unfit to a fit fitness level uh, reduce their uh, uh, risk of dying by 50%. So these studies I've shown you now, they, they have contributed a lot so that the World Health Organization can say that you should do 30 minutes every day of moderate uh, intensity physical activity because that will improve your help, health and help you uh, uh, live a long and healthy life. So how many do this? Uh, according to the numbers from the Norwegian Institute of Public Health, uh, only 20% of us uh, uh, is active, uh, according to the uh, uh, advice from the World Health uh, Organization. And uh, the number is uh, the same around the globe. So, an important question is, how can we improve this given our busy lives? I believe the answer is by high-intensity exercise. As this slide shows, uh, or to present the slide a little bit uh, more from the beginning. This is a, a, a study from Hawaii. It counts almost a half a million uh, people. And the people were asked, uh, how many hours do you spend on physical exercise every day? And the people, uh, they answered uh, different. So some people were uh, very active and some were not so active. And uh, as the slide show here, um, uh, those reporting uh, a higher number or, or, or longer duration of physical activity every day, they have a reduction in the mortality rate uh, that uh, are increasing. However, the most interesting thing of this slide is the blue dotted line, because the blue dotted line are the people that are reporting uh, that they are physically active, but that they are uh, physical active uh, with vigorous intensity. Uh, that means it means that they are breathing uh, a little bit more heavy when they do the exercise. And uh, we see that uh, the, the risk reduction is very much higher uh, for those that report that they are vigorous intensity active compared to those that are only moderate active. Uh, this uh, relationship not only holds for the mortality, but it also uh, holds for the risk of getting heart disease. So this is also a very big study involving 80,000 women, and they are uh, reporting their intensity of physical activity, and uh, the bars here shows the, uh, uh, the reported intensity, the blue is the highest, and the risk of getting uh, cardiovascular disease in the future. So we see in every age cohort investigated, those that reported highest intensity of their physical exercise had least chances of getting uh, ca uh, cardiovascular disease in the future. 
So, what is the best way to perform high-intensity exercise? I believe it is by doing interval training, and that is the fastest way to improve fitness. And here are some uh, 70 to 75-year-old women uh, breathing very heavily after performing interval training. And um, this shows the fundamentals of the interval training. At interval training, you must uh, breathe heavily, and for breathing heavily, you must uh, tax your cardiovascular system to a certain degree. This shows uh, uh, that the heart rate must up to above 85% of your maximal heart rate. And uh, uh, as you can see here, this individual has uh, repeated uh, four intervals uh, at this uh, uh, heart rate, and the uh, heart rate or the workouts. Uh, are uh, interrupted by two to three minutes with the uh, lighter exercise, where you rest so that you can be able to work hard again for another four minutes. We have uh, performed high-intensity interval training not only in humans, but also, also in rats. So this uh, slide shows uh, uh, um, a rat with, uh, with the diabetes before and after exercise. So here's the mice after being trained and it becomes a lot fitter uh, compared to before exercise. But when we compare the effectiveness of training, we see that high intensity exercise is uh, more effective uh, compared to moderate intensity exercise for elevating the aerobic capacity in rats. Uh, we also investigate not only healthy rats, but also um, uh, rats with uh, heart disease. And if we take healthy animals, we see that they progress in a, in a steady state manner with exercise training. And uh, uh, after six weeks, uh, the uh, aerobic capacity flattens out. The good thing is that the same happens in the, heart, in the hearts of rat with, uh, rats with heart failure. These rats are very uh, sick and they have hearts that are pumping uh, very uh, uh, little blood for every beat, and, and they are not healthy at all. But this, if you see here at the end of the, the study, the rats with heart failure actually become in better shape compared to healthy, untrained rats. So what about humans with heart failure? We have uh, investigated the differences of uh, different exercise training uh, modalities in uh, humans, and we see that uh, uh, if we compare high to moderate intensity exercise, 12 weeks of training in uh, older people around 75 years old, old with heart failure, uh, we see this effect on the aerobic capacity. Uh, the interval training group working at high intensity for 12 weeks, they improved their aerobic capacity with almost 50%, while we saw a small uh, in increment in uh, those training at moderate intensity. And the, the, the things that were uh, nicest with this study was that the, 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 the elderly men reported that they were able now to, to go shopping, to clean their apartments, to, to play with their grandchildren, and they had no chance of doing that before. So this type of exercise really uh, made these uh, persons become uh, uh, fitter and healthier. So in every patient's group, we have been investigated, ranging from the sickest patients, the heart failure patients, to the coronary artery disease patients, and the metabolic syndrome patients, and up to the healthy one. When we are comparing the effectiveness of moderate exercise to high-intensity exercise, we see that the high-intensity exercise is more effective to become a quick, a quicker fit uh, compared to moderate intensity exercise. And we think this is the relationship. We think that if you consider exercise intensity as a uh, continuum from inactivity uh, at the one end and, and uh, uh, very active and very intensive exercise at the other end, we see that the muscle cells, uh, th they start contracting uh, in, in more. They contract, uh, you have larger contractions and faster relaxations at, after high-intensity exercise compared to moderate-intensity exercise. And we also have cell dimensions that grow larger in a physiological good manner, making the cells uh, become longer. 
This will lead to uh, a higher cardiac output. It means that uh, the amount of blood that the heart is pumping out per minute is increasing, and eventually the uh, aerobic capacity improves more after uh, high-intensity exercise. <clears throat> so where can you start? If you go to our website, you will find all the information you need regarding this type of training. Obesity and lower obesity <coughs> fitness are currently a major threat to... Here we have interval training guides. Uh, we have answer of uh, all the questions that you might have for uh, uh, becoming fitter. We also have your heart rate calculator helping you to find your right uh, pulse uh, that you need to have when you do the interval training. And we also have a fitness calculator where you can calculate how fit you are without uh, have, to have to test your uh, aerobic capacity on the treadmill. This is much uh, easier. You don't have to breathe at all. So here you can have your, uh, your, your, your fitness uh, number and your fitness age. So the take-home message I want to give you tonight is that um, nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can start today and make a new ending. Thank you very much. <clears throat>